Hey guys, Alex here, and I made a 3D model using Google SketchUp of the lunar cycles, a 28-day cycle of the sun and moon, traversing the flat earth plane using Gleason's 1892 new standard map of the world because it's my favorite azimuthal equidistant projection. Um, now, I have the North Pole down here, I have Polaris up here, uh, and I have the sun and moon here. Now, the moon is higher in altitude because in Vedic cosmology, it, it contends that the moon is higher in altitude, and I'm completely obsessed with ancient Vedic cosmology. Um, also, when I first saw this Gleason's 1892 uh, Asimov equidistant projection, I didn't really understand what these stars meant. It wasn't until I made this model and aligned Polaris with that top star that it began to make a lot more sense that it's directly above, uh, kind of like the Dakota map. And so, here is the 28-day cycle as seen from above. Now, this is over the equator, so it would be during the, uh, during the equinox. And they're off. So this would be a, a young moon, and as the sun passes 6 p.m., you have a, I'm sorry, 6 a.m., you have a waxing crescent as the sun passes noon you have a waxing quarter as the sun passes 6 p.m. you have a waxing gibbous and when the sun hits midnight and the moon hits noon you have a full moon as they're 180 degrees apart and that completes the waxing phases and now and that's the 14th day and now we'll begin the waning phases which is another 14 days so as the sun passes 6 a.m you have a, a waning uh, crescent, and as the sun passes noon, you have a waning quarter, and when the sun passes 6 p.m., you have a waning gibbous, and the sun catches back up <clears throat> at midnight, and you have another new moon. So uh, this is my 28-day cycle of the moon. Let's get another angle here. And so you can see how the sun and moon traverse the flat earth plane um, according to Vedic cosmology. And of course, the sunlight, uh, the sun lights up half the plane at any given moment. And so when, when I was making this, um, when I was making this, I also wanted to show that um, if we do have these celestial bodies orbiting above an earth plane, um, then they must be doing it, that there must be something that's allowing it to happen. They can't just magically be floating up there. And so when you watch acoustic propulsion, acoustic levitation, resonant levitation, magnetic levitation, uh, you begin to wonder, like, perhaps this is how it's, this is how it's happening. Now we know that our ancient universe is completely electromagnetic, and gravity is a misrepresentation of electromagnetism and density. So perhaps the and we know that the north, the geographic north pole is the magnetic south pole because the positive face of all compasses point north, and positive is attracted to negative. So there must be a negative due north anywhere you are on the earth. Uh, so the north, the geographic north pole is a magnetic south pole. I, I'd made a post about that before. Uh, and so what if the Polaris star is the magnetic north pole or the positive magnetic pole? And so the north star would be the positive magnetic pole and the north pole, geographic north pole, would be the negative magnetic pole or the south magnetic pole. And between them, you have a magnetic field in which these celestial bodies can magnetically levitate. And so that was something I was thinking about, and I'm sure other people have thought the same thing. Um, but it would be interesting to see uh, if we could prove that somehow. There could be some kind of proof, because uh, we know that you can magnetically levitate uh, objects between uh, magnetic poles in a magnetic field. So this must be how that's happening. Um, and also while I'm here, I might as well show you the model with the planets that I made. Now this is a different, um, this is a different one, but it's pretty cool because. I was able to I was able to go whoops. Oh. Oh. There we go. I was able to put in all the planets. And so we can check out the planets here. Um 
And of course, I'm obsessed with Vedic cosmology, so I threw in Rahu and Ketu. And so, yeah, this is how I believe that works. And of course, you have the summer orbit along um, Cancer, and then equino Equinox's orbits along the equator, and the winter orbit along Capricorn. Anyway, so I hope this I uh, I hope this helps paint a better picture in your head as to how these things work and how this model works of a planispheric geocentric cosmological model. So yeah, that's my quick little five minute video. I hope you like it. It's the first one I've made of the sort. And uh, if you think there's something I can make on on Google SketchUp, um, if you have any ideas, nothing too difficult, uh, let me know. And uh, I'm going to work on trying to get these planets to orbit. So have a good day.